Hello friends, welcome to my channel Eccentric Learning. I hope you have gone through the earlier videos of geometry where I have covered many concepts of triangles like congruent and similar triangles, geometric centers of triangles, 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90 degree triangle and so on. In case if you haven't gone through those videos till now, the link has been given in the description box, please go through it. Also, if you like my videos, then do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends. In today's video, we are going to see what are quadrilaterals like parallelogram, rhombus, rectangles and so on. So let us begin with today's video. First, let us see what is a quadrilateral. Any four-sided closed figure can be termed as a quadrilateral. Here I have drawn a figure ABCD which is a closed figure and has four sides. So, this figure ABCD can be termed as a quadrilateral. Now, we can find the area of any quadrilateral simply by dividing the quadrilateral into two triangles. Here, I have joined the vertex B and the vertex D to form the diagonal BD which divides this quadrilateral into two triangles ABD and the triangle CDB. Also, say AE and CF are two perpendiculars drawn from the vertex A and C on the diagonal BD. So, the area of this quadrilateral ABCD can be written as the area of triangle ABD plus the area of triangle CBD. Now, we know area of a triangle is given by half into base into altitude. So the area of triangle ABD can be written as half into base that is the diagonal BD times the altitude that is AE. In a similar way, the area of triangle CBD can be written as half into base BD times the altitude CF. Now, from these two areas, we can take half into BD common. So we'd be left with AE plus CF. So the area of this quadrilateral ABCD can be written as half into one of the diagonals BD times the sum of the altitudes drawn from the other vertex on this diagonal BD. So we can find the area of any quadrilateral simply by dividing it into two triangles and using this formula. Now, by imposing certain conditions on the sides or angles of a quadrilateral, we can get various figures. The first is a parallelogram, which is a quadrilateral in which the opposite sides are parallel. So, if in this quadrilateral, the side AB is parallel to the side CD and the side BC is parallel to the side AD, then this quadrilateral will become a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel and also equal. That is, the side AB is equal to the side CD and the side BC is equal to the side AD. Also, in a parallelogram, the opposite angles are equal. That is, angle A is equal to angle C and angle B is equal to angle D. Also, in a parallelogram, sum of any two adjacent angles is 180 degree. So, angle A plus angle B or angle B plus angle C or angle C plus angle D or angle D plus angle A would be 180 degree. Also, in a parallelogram, each diagonal will divide the parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So, if BD is one of the diagonal, then the two triangles, triangle ABD and triangle BCD would be congruent triangles. And if AC is the other diagonal, then the triangle ABC and the triangle ACD will also be congruent triangles. Also, the diagonals in a parallelogram bisect each other. 
So if these two diagonals meet at a point O, then OA would be equal to OC and OB would be equal to OD. So in a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal and parallel. Opposite angles are equal. Sum of any two adjacent angles is 180 degree. Each diagonal will divide the parallelogram into two congruent triangles and the diagonals bisect each other. Conversely, if in a quadrilateral, the opposite sides are equal or if the opposite angles are equal or if the diagonals bisect each other or if a pair of opposite sides are parallel and equal, in such case, the quadrilateral would be a parallelogram. Also, we can find the area of a parallelogram in many ways simply by using these formulas. If we know the length of the base and height in a parallelogram, we can directly use this formula base into height to find the area of the parallelogram. Also, if we know the length of the two diagonals in a parallelogram and sine of the angle between them, in that case, we can use this formula to find the area, which is given by half into d1 into d2 into sine of alpha, where d1 and d2 are the length of the two diagonals in the parallelogram and alpha is the angle between these two diagonals. Also, if we know the length of the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram, then also we can find the area simply by using this formula, which is given by a into b into sine theta where A is the length of one side, B is the length of the adjacent side and theta is the angle between these two adjacent sides. So whenever we need to find the area of a parallelogram, we can directly use these formulas. Now, if any two adjacent sides of a parallelogram are equal, then all the four sides would be equal to each other and we'd be getting a figure which would be a rhombus. So a rhombus is a parallelogram in which a pair of adjacent sides are equal. That is all the four sides of a rhombus are equal. Since a rhombus is a parallelogram, so all the properties of a parallelogram will be applying to a rhombus. Further, in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. That is, the diagonals AC and BD would be bisecting each other as well as they would be perpendicular to each other. So, all these angles would be 90 degree. Conversely, we can say that any quadrilateral where the two diagonals bisect each other at right angles will be a rhombus. Also, the four triangles formed by these two bisecting diagonals with the four sides of the rhombus will also be congruent. So, triangle OAD, triangle ODC, triangle OBC and triangle OAB, all these four triangles will be congruent triangles. Now, if we consider the length of the diagonal AC to be D1 and the length of the diagonal BD to be D2. In that case, the area of a rhombus, which is also a parallelogram, can be written as half of D1 D2 into sine 90 degree as the angle between these two diagonal is 90 degree and we know sine of 90 degree is 1. So area of a rhombus is half into d1 into d2. So if we know the length of the diagonal in a rhombus, we can find its area simply by using half into d1 into d2. Now, since AC is d1, so AO would be half of AC, which would be d1 by 2 and OD would be half of BD, which would be d2 by 2. Now, triangle AOD is a right angle triangle, right angle at O. 
So we can directly use Pythagoras theorem, which is hypotenuse square equal to base square plus height square. So from this, this side of the rhombus can be written as 1 by 2 under root of d1 square plus d2 square. So if we know the length of the diagonal of a rhombus, we can find the side of the rhombus simply by using this formula. So a rhombus is a parallelogram in which a pair of adjacent sides are equal. That is all the four sides of a rhombus are equal. And in a rhombus, the diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. And the area of a rhombus is given by half into D1 into D2. And the side of rhombus is given by half into under root of D1 square plus D2 square, where D1 and D2 are the length of the diagonals of the rhombus. Now, if two adjacent angles of a parallelogram are equal, then all the four angles would be equal and each in turn will be equal to 90 degree. In that case, we'd be getting a figure and this figure is known as rectangle. So a rectangle is a parallelogram in which all the angles are equal and each angle is equal to 90 degree. Since a rectangle is a parallelogram, so all the properties of a parallelogram will also be applicable to a rectangle. Further, the diagonals of a rectangle are equal. That is, BD would be equal to AC in case of a rectangle. Now, if we consider the length of the side AB to be L and the length of the side AD to be B, in that case, the area of this rectangle, which is also a parallelogram, can be written as base into height, that is L into B. So, the area of a rectangle is length into breadth. Also, triangle ABD is a right angle triangle, right angle at A. So, we can use Pythagoras theorem here from which we'll get the length of BD, that is the length of the diagonal to be L square plus B square. So, if we know the length and breadth of a rectangle, we can also find the length of its diagonal simply by using this relation. So, a rectangle is a parallelogram in which all the angles are equal and each angle is equal to 90 degree. The diagonals of a rectangle are also equal. The area of a rectangle is given by length into breadth and the diagonal of a rectangle is given by under root of L square plus B square. Now, in a rectangle, if all the sides are equal or in a rhombus, all the four angles are equal, then we'd be getting a figure which would be a square. So a square is a rectangle in which all the four sides are equal or it is a rhombus in which all the four angles are equal. Since a square comes from a rectangle or a rhombus, so all the properties of a rectangle or rhombus would also be applicable in a square. So the diagonals of a square would be equal and they would be also bisecting at right angles. So the diagonals AC and BD would be equal and they would be bisecting each other at right angles. Also in a square, all the sides are equal. So area of a square would be simply side square and the length of the diagonal of a square would be root 2 times of side. So a square is a rectangle in which all the four sides are equal or it's a rhombus in which all the four angles are equal and the area of a square is given by side square and the length of the diagonal of a square is given by root 2 times the side.
Now, let us see what is a trapezium. A trapezium is a quadrilateral in which one of its sides is parallel to its opposite side. Here, I have drawn a quadrilateral ABCD such that this side AB is parallel to the side CD. So, this quadrilateral would be a trapezium. Also, the two sides other than the parallel sides in a trapezium are called as the oblique sides. So, the side BC and AD are oblique sides. Now, the area of a trapezium is given by half into sum of parallel sides into perpendicular distance between them. Say the distance between these two parallel sides is of length HC. In that case, the area of trapezium can be written as half into sum of parallel sides. So this would be half into AB plus DC times the perpendicular distance between them, which is H. So the area of a trapezium in this case would be half into AB plus DC into the perpendicular distance between them, which is H. Now, if the length of the two oblique sides are equal, then the trapezium is said to be an isosceles trapezium. In this case, the two oblique sides are AD and BC. So if these two lengths are equal, then this trapezium would be an isosceles trapezium. And in case of an isosceles trapezium, angle DAB, that is this angle, is equal to angle CBA. And angle ADC, that is this angle, is equal to angle BCD, that is this angle. Also, if P and Q are the midpoints of the oblique sides AD and BC respectively for this trapezium ABCD, then the length of PQ is given by half into AB plus CD. That is, the length of PQ is the average of the length of the two parallel sides. So, a trapezium is a quadrilateral in which one of the sides is parallel to its opposite side. And the area of a trapezium is given by half into sum of parallel sides into perpendicular distance between them. And if the length of the two oblique sides in a trapezium are equal, then the trapezium is said to be an isosceles trapezium. And if P and Q are the midpoints of the two oblique sides, in that case, the length of PQ is equal in length to the average of the two parallel sides. Now, let us see what is a kite. A kite is a quadrilateral in which two pairs of adjacent sides are equal and the longer diagonal bisects the shorter diagonal perpendicularly. Here, ABCD is a quadrilateral and the one pair of adjacent side AD is equal to CD and the other pair of adjacent sides AB and BC are also equal. And the longer diagonal BD is bisecting the shorter diagonal AC perpendicularly. So these angles would be 90 degree. And if this point is O, then OA would be equal to OC. But OD is not equal to OB. In that case, this quadrilateral can be termed as a Also, in a kite, the longer diagonal divides the kite into two congruent triangles. Here, BD is the longer diagonal, so it will divide this kite into two congruent triangles. So, triangle ABD would be congruent to triangle BCD. Also, angle BAD is equal to angle BCD. Also, the area of a kite is given by just like the area of a rhombus that is half into product of the two diagonals. So, if D1 and D2 are the two diagonals for this kite ABCD, then the area of the kite can be written as half into D1 into D2. So, a kite is a quadrilateral in which 
two pairs of adjacent sides are equal in length and the longer diagonal bisects the shorter diagonal perpendicularly. Also, the longer diagonal divides the kite into two congruent triangles and the area of a kite is given by half into product of the two diagonals. Now, let us see one question based on a trapezium. So, we have been given a trapezium ABCD where AB is parallel to CD and the length of the four sides AB, BC, CD and DA are given to be 5, 3, 10 and 4 units respectively. And we need to find the area of this trapezium. We know the area of a trapezium is given by half into sum of parallel sides into perpendicular distance between them. Here, the sum of parallel sides would be AB plus CD and the length of AB is 5 units and the length of DC is 10 units. So, the sum of parallel sides would be 5 plus 10 that would be 15 units. So, if you are able to find the perpendicular distance between these two parallel lines, we would be able to find the area of this trapezium. To find the perpendicular distance between these two parallel lines, let us drop a perpendicular from the vertex A on the side CD at point GC. And let us represent the length of this perpendicular by H. In a similar way, if we drop a perpendicular from the vertex B on the side CD at point G dash C, then this length will also represent the height of the trapezium. So this length will also be H. Now, if we consider the figure A, B, G dash and G, in that case, this figure would be a rectangle where the length of AG and BG dash would be H and the length of AB and GG dash would be 5 units. So, the length of GG dash would be 5 units. Now, let us consider the length of DG to be X. In that case, the length of G dash C would be 5 minus X as the total length of DC is 10 units and the length of GG dash is 5 units. So, the sum of the length of DG and G dash C would be 5 units. So, if DG length is X, then G dash C length would be 5 minus X. Now, if we consider triangle ADG, in that case, this would be a right angle triangle, right angle at G. So, we can use Pythagoras theorem which is hypotenuse square equal to height square plus base square. So we can write AD square to be equal to GD square plus AG square, which would be giving us four square equals to X square plus eight square. In a similar way, if we consider triangle BG dash C, in that case, this triangle will also be a right angle triangle, right angle at G dash. So we can also use Pythagoras theorem here. So BC square would be equal to BG dash square plus G dash C square, which would be giving us three square equals to BG dash square, which is eight square and G dash C square, which is five minus X square. Now, we have two equations in X and H. The first is X square plus H square equal to 16. And the second is H square plus 5 minus X whole square equals to 9. So, when we solve these two equations, we'd be getting the value of X to be 3.2 units and the value of H to be 2.4 units. So, the perpendicular distance between these two parallel lines would be 2.4 units. 
So the area of this trapezium would be half into sum of the parallel sides that is AB plus CD which would be 5 plus 10 times the perpendicular distance between them which is 2.4 units. When we simplify this, we'd be getting the area of the trapezium to be 18 square units. So, in this way, by dropping perpendiculars, we can find the perpendicular distance between the two parallel lines of a trapezium and then we can directly use this formula to find the area of the trapezium. So, that's it for today's video in which we have seen what are quadrilaterals like parallelogram, rhombus, trapezium and so on. And in the next video, we are going to see what are polygons like pentagon, hexagon, etc. and its properties. I hope you have learned something in today's video. But if you have any confusion, you can watch the video again. And still, if you have any doubts, you can put it in the comment box. I will try to answer each one of your queries. So if you like my videos, then do subscribe my channel and also share with your friends. I will see you all in my next video. Till then. Keep learning, keep sharing and keep growing. Thank you.